Hi, I'm Tanner Faust at the World Drift Championships, and I'm going to show you how to drift in Gran Turismo. Drifting is not really a motorsport. Drifting is kind of like a car control show. It's cars sliding sideways around a five, six, seven, eight turn course, getting within inches of certain prescribed points of the track that the judges give them. Make them think you're gonna die and then somehow survive the run and you get a good score. The sport of drifting requires the car to go very fast while it's sideways. In order to really start a drift, it's important to brake grip on the back tires, purposefully inducing an oversteer, but not letting it get so big that you spin out. So you kind of are balancing the car between spinning out and then normal driving. And it feels like you're sort of floating around the racetrack. It's very cool. I drive the Rockstar AEM 350Z in the Formula D series. This is Gran Turismo 5 Prologue, but I'm in a 350Z. It feels a lot like my drift car, and I'm kind of practicing some of the drift techniques that I would use in my competition car. And I gotta say, it's pretty mind-boggling to me how realistic it is. And I don't have to pay for the dents either. That's called getting too close to the wall. Oops. I think I wanna change the setup of this car maybe to match my competition car because I've learned a lot in three years of drifting the 350Z and what it's good at and what it needs in order to be a good drift car. I like to run with the driving physics on professional. I like to run a manual transmission so that if you do hit the rev limiter it doesn't automatically shift up. The active stability management is good to start out with but if you want to slide the car around shut that off. Traction control, sorry, gotta kill it. And then we've got some pretty sticky tires. The racing tires are much stickier than the sports tires. So we'll go down to the sports tires just to make it a little bit easier to slide this car around. Then you can actually go into uh, some real driving options and fine tune the suspension. And this is extremely important if you're drifting a car. One thing that we've learned in the last three years of drifting a 350Z is that uh, it's very important to have a little bit of toe in in the rear and to have a slightly softer suspension in the rear of the suspension also. So it's, it's kind of cool that you can do that with this particular game. When drifting the cars on Gran Turismo Prologue, the techniques are actually very similar to real life as you'd expect. You've got a handbrake, and the handbrake is great for entering the turns, getting sideways right off the bat, so that you can then dump the clutch and slide through the corner. You can also flick side to side and get rotation through the corner that way. Let me show you the handbrake technique to initiate the corner. In my car, I've got this big hydraulic handbrake that I yank up. Here, I just put the circle button and it really does the exact same thing. I'm coming in, locking up the handbrake, it's sliding the car sideways, and now I'm drifting through the corner and kind of exiting out. The other thing you can use the circle button for is a clutch kick, and it's something that you have to do in drifting a lot. If you're coming around a corner, let's say I'm in third gear around this turn, and I want to rev up the engine and get a clutch kick, I can push that and it kicks the back end out. Just like in real life, it's a very cool technique in a real drift car, just like it is in the game. Now on the Iger track that I'm on now, there's a couple turns that they're perfect for a flick or a side to side weight transfer like this one here. It's a right, a left, and that naturally starts the car into a big drift, which sometimes can be difficult to manage, but just like in the actual car with a little bit of practice, you get pretty good at it. All right, now we find ourselves in, that's right, a big beautiful Mustang. Look at her, she's cherry red, right off the lot. We're gonna drift this puppy. Now the Mustang, of course, doesn't quite have the balance of the 350Z, and you'll feel that right away as soon as you start sliding. It has a bunch of torque because it's got that V8, and so you can get away with spinning the tires at a lower RPM, but it's almost like the back end steps out easier and it spins quite a bit easier than the other cars because it doesn't have that balance. I've slid these uh, Mustangs around in real life and this is a pretty good representation of what they're like. But you gotta love the torque of a V8. It sounds good, it feels good, even on the game. And it uh, makes it a good practice car. We're up to some big speed, we've got a really tight corner coming up. The braking still has to be done very early, and then you can hit the handbrake at the last minute, grab a gear, and spin out and wave to the fans. How embarrassing. That would be a zero run for me right there. Kind of like riding a moped. 
kind of fun, but you just don't want other people to watch you doing it. Yeah, buddy.